Imagine a force so potent that it can alter the course of history, shape civilizations, and dictate the weather patterns across the globe. This force is deeply embedded in the Earth's climate system, a cycle so vast and complex that its reach touches every continent. What I'm talking about is the El Niño Southern Oscillation, or ENSO. It consists of two opposing extremes, El Niño and La Niña, each with the power to trigger significant shifts in our weather. From torrential floods to droughts, from heat waves to bitterly cold winters, the ENSO cycle holds sway over our planet's climate in ways we're only just beginning to fully understand. But ENSO is no modern phenomenon. Evidence of its influence stretches back thousands of years, showing up in coral fossils, ancient tree rings, and even in written records from early civilizations. Some experts believe that ENSO events may have even contributed to the collapse of great empires like the Incan Empire in the 16th century, or may have played a role in historical events such as the French Revolution. The historical significance is immense, but the contemporary impact is equally profound. Take the 2023 to 2024 El Niño, for instance. It broke records with its intense ocean temperatures, causing unprecedented coral bleaching, agricultural disasters, and extreme rainfall in North America. Now, as we edge toward the end of 2024, all eyes are on the potential rise of La Niña, El Niño's cooler opposite phase. Predictions suggest La Niña could emerge in late 2024 or early 2025, and the implications are massive. What can we expect from this next chapter in the ENSO cycle? How will La Niña affect our already warming planet? And what lessons can we learn to brace ourselves for the future? Today, we're diving deep into the dynamics of ENSO with a special focus on what La Niña could mean for the world moving forward. To grasp how La Niña fits into the larger climate picture, it's crucial to understand how the El Niño Southern Oscillation ENSO system operates. This natural cycle consists of three phases, El Niño, La Niña, and the neutral phase in between. These phases generally switch every two to seven years, and each one has a profound impact on ocean temperatures, atmospheric conditions, and weather patterns worldwide. The ENSO neutral phase, where neither El Niño nor La Niña dominates, represents the baseline state of the system, but the system rarely stays neutral for long. When conditions tip toward either extreme, the global climate responds dramatically with consequences that ripple across continents. At the heart of the ENSO system is the Pacific Ocean, particularly the region around the equator. Picture it this way. The Pacific acts like a massive interconnected engine. The way this engine runs affects how heat and moisture are distributed throughout the atmosphere. When everything is in balance, during an ENSO neutral period, trade winds blow predictably, pushing warm surface waters from the coast of South America westward toward Asia. This movement of warm water allows cold, nutrient-rich water from the ocean's depths to rise up along the South American coast, a process known as upwelling. These nutrients support rich ecosystems, feeding fisheries and sustaining local economies. But when the ENSO cycle enters one of its extremes, this equilibrium is disrupted. These disruptions typically begin with changes in the strength of the trade winds, which are driven by the planet's rotation and the uneven heating of Earth by the sun. Warm air rises at the equator due to intense solar radiation, and as this warm air moves toward the poles, it cools and sinks, creating massive loops of air circulation known as Hadley cells. These cells are central to the creation of the trade winds, which blow from east to west in the tropics. However, Earth's rotation influences the direction of these winds through something called the Coriolis effect, causing the winds to curve. In neutral conditions, these winds drive warm surface water across the Pacific, but when the winds weaken or strengthen significantly, they set the stage for either El Niño or La Niña. Historically, the trade winds were so consistent that early sailors relied on them for navigation. Thus, they earned the name trade winds. But the moment these winds deviate from their usual patterns, 
we know that something is happening within the Enso cycle. A weakening of the trade winds typically signals the onset of El Nino, while a strengthening points to La Nina. To appreciate the full impact of Enso, let's first reflect on El Nino, which is the warmer phase of the cycle. During an El Nino event, the trade winds weaken and warm water that would normally be blown across the Pacific to Asia starts to build up in the central and eastern Pacific. This rise in sea surface temperature disrupts atmospheric circulation patterns, particularly the Walker circulation, which shifts the location of thunderstorms and rainfall around the globe. In places like Southeast Asia and Australia, this shift can lead to severe droughts, sparking wildfires and threatening agriculture. Meanwhile, countries along the Pacific coast of the Americas, particularly in Peru and Chile, often experience torrential rains and catastrophic flooding. These changes also wreak havoc on marine ecosystems. For instance, the 2023 to 2024 El Nino event triggered extensive coral bleaching across the world's tropical reefs. Coral reefs, already under stress from rising ocean temperatures, become especially vulnerable during these warmer periods as they expel the symbiotic algae that give them their colour and nutrients, often leading to widespread die-offs. In the Atlantic, El Nino can also suppress hurricane activity by increasing wind shear, changes in wind speed and direction at different altitudes which disrupts the formation of tropical storms. This means that during an El Nino year, the Atlantic hurricane season may be less active, but other parts of the world are far from safe. The Western and Southern United States, for example, typically experience wetter conditions with increased flooding risks. This was especially evident during the 2023 to 2024 El Nino, which unleashed a series of atmospheric rivers, narrow bands of concentrated moisture that can dump massive amounts of rain when they hit land, leading to flooding, landslides and devastation in California and other western states. If El Nino represents a breakdown in normal climate patterns, La Nina is the phase where the system snaps back into an exaggerated version of its usual self. Instead of weaker trade winds and warmer waters, La Nina brings stronger trade winds and cooler than normal Pacific temperatures. The cooler waters are a direct result of more intense upwelling, which not only cools the ocean, but also fuels rich ecosystems in places like the coast of South America, where fisheries tend to thrive during La Nina events. So what kind of impacts can we expect from La Nina? In North America, La Nina often brings colder and wetter winters to the northern United States and Canada, while the southern regions, such as the Southern Plains and southwestern U.S., tend to experience warmer, drier conditions. La Nina also tends to heighten hurricane activity in the Atlantic, as the absence of the wind shear that typically suppresses hurricanes during El Nino allows for more frequent and powerful storms. This was evident during the 2020 La Nina, which saw a highly active Atlantic hurricane season with 30 named storms, the most ever recorded in a single season. Across the Pacific, countries like Australia and Indonesia often face the opposite problem during La Nina too much rain. In Australia, La Nina can lead to intense rainfall and flooding, particularly in the northern and eastern regions while East Africa tends to experience drier conditions, increasing the risk of drought and famine. Even regions far from the Pacific, like Europe, can feel the effects of La Nina, which often brings cooler winters to parts of the continent. As of August 2024, we're staring down the potential of another La Nina event forming before the end of the year. NOAA estimates a 66% chance that La Nina will develop between September and November 2024, with a 74% likelihood it will persist through the winter into 2025. While it's still uncertain how strong this La Nina will be, there's growing concern that its impacts could exacerbate already strained ecosystems and weather patterns, particularly as we continue to experience the effects of climate change. One of the biggest questions scientists are grappling with is how the ENSO cycle itself might be changing in response to global warming. As greenhouse gas emissions continue to heat up the planet, it's possible that both El Nino and La Nina events will become more extreme. 
Warmer ocean temperatures may fuel more powerful storms, while changes in atmospheric circulation could intensify the impacts of droughts and floods. Some research even suggests that we could see more frequent ENSO events, which would mean a quicker flip between El Niño and La Niña conditions, further amplifying the unpredictable nature of our climate. We are stepping into an era where understanding and responding to the ENSO cycle will be more crucial than ever. Governments, businesses and individuals will need to adapt quickly to these climatic shifts as the impacts ripple through industries, ecosystems and everyday life. The question is no longer just about understanding the weather patterns, but about how we can better predict, prepare for and mitigate the growing risks posed by these natural phenomena, especially in a world where human activity is already pushing the climate system to its limits. The effects of La Niña and El Niño extend beyond the immediate, visible impacts such as flooding, droughts and heat waves. These events have far-reaching consequences for global food security, infrastructure and economies. Agriculture is one of the sectors most directly affected by the ENSO cycle. During El Niño years, regions that depend on consistent rainfall for crops might face droughts, leading to lower yields and higher food prices. On the other hand, La Niña can bring too much rain to certain areas, ruining crops and leading to similar economic strains. For instance, during a La Niña event, nations like Australia and parts of Southeast Asia experience unusually wet conditions. While this might seem beneficial for agriculture at first, excessive rainfall can waterlog soil, prevent planting and lead to crop failure. Conversely, during El Niño, parts of Africa and Southeast Asia often endure severe droughts, crippling agricultural production and triggering food crises. These climate extremes can upset global markets and lead to price hikes, affecting both developed and developing nations. The fishing industry too is heavily influenced by these cycles. During El Niño, the warm waters of the Pacific disrupt marine ecosystems, particularly off the coasts of South America. The normally nutrient-rich cold waters fail to rise from the ocean's depths, reducing the food supply for fish. This devastates fishing communities that rely on the abundance of species such as anchovies and sardines. La Niña, with its enhanced upwelling, typically reverses this trend, temporarily boosting fish populations and the fishing industry. However, the instability of these cycles makes long-term planning difficult. Beyond human economic systems, natural ecosystems also respond dramatically to ENSO's push and pull. El Niño, for example, is notorious for causing widespread coral bleaching. Coral reefs, which thrive in stable, warm waters, are highly sensitive to changes in sea temperatures. When the ocean becomes too warm, corals expel the algae living in their tissues, causing them to turn white, a process called bleaching. While corals can survive this, prolonged bleaching events often lead to mass die-offs, destroying some of the most diverse ecosystems on the planet. Reefs not only support a vast array of marine life, but they also protect coastlines from storm surges and provide food and income for millions of people around the world. Meanwhile, La Nina can trigger wildfires in areas such as the Amazon rainforest, which often faces drier conditions during these events. These fires can destroy vast swathes of forest, releasing huge amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, further contributing to global warming. The loss of forest cover also reduces biodiversity and weakens the planet's ability to absorb carbon. Wildlife in these regions, from amphibians to mammals, struggles to cope with the rapid environmental changes brought on by ENSO fluctuations, often facing threats of habitat loss, food scarcity, and in some cases, extinction. In Africa, for instance, El Niño can exacerbate droughts in regions like East Africa, leading to widespread famine, water shortages and mass migrations of both humans and animals. On the other side of the globe, in Australia, La Nina can bring excessive rains that trigger floods, affecting the survival of certain wildlife species, particularly those living in lowland areas. Some species may benefit from these shifts temporarily, but the long-term ecological balance can be severely disrupted by recurring and increasingly intense ENSO events. As we look to the future, one of the biggest challenges facing climate scientists is determining how global warming will affect the ENSO cycle itself. 
Current models suggest that both El Niño and La Niña events could become more intense as global temperatures rise, but predicting exactly how and when these changes will occur remains difficult. One possibility is that warming oceans will provide more fuel for storms and weather systems, making the impacts of ENSO events even more extreme. We could also see the frequency of ENSO events increase, meaning that instead of cycling every two to seven years, we might experience these disruptive phases more often, leaving less time for ecosystems and societies to recover. Moreover, the interaction between climate change and ENSO could produce new, previously unseen patterns. For instance, the 2023 to 2024 El Niño was one of the strongest ever recorded. But scientists are now watching closely to see if the following La Niña will also deviate from its typical behavior. There's a growing concern that climate change might alter the timing and nature of these cycles, making them harder to predict and increasing the likelihood of overlapping or back-to-back -back extreme weather events. One theory gaining traction is that warming oceans could shift the geographical center of ENSO events. Historically, El Niño and La Niña have their strongest impacts in the central and eastern Pacific. However, as sea surface temperatures rise globally, some researchers suggest that the focus of these events could shift farther west, potentially altering how they affect different regions. This westward shift could bring even more extreme weather to Asia, Australia and other parts of the western Pacific, while somewhat reducing the impact on the Americas. Given the far-reaching and complex impacts of ENSO, it's clear that preparation is key. Communities, especially those in vulnerable regions, must begin to adapt their infrastructure, agricultural practices and disaster preparedness to better withstand these climate extremes. Governments and international organizations are increasingly focusing on early warning systems such as improved climate modeling and monitoring to predict ENSO events more accurately. These systems allow for better disaster preparedness, giving communities more time to respond to impending droughts, floods and other extreme weather. In agriculture, new strategies are being developed to make crops more resilient to shifting climate patterns. This includes breeding drought-resistant plants and improving water management practices in regions prone to either extreme dryness or excessive rainfall. In fisheries, nations are working on sustainable fishing practices that can withstand the boom and bust cycles of marine life tied to ENSO events. Meanwhile, coastal cities are investing in stronger defences against rising seas and more intense storms, both of which are worsened by ENSO extremes. As individuals, there's also a role to play. By reducing our carbon footprints, supporting sustainable practices and demanding action on climate change, we global warming and by extension the most extreme effects of ENSO. The ENSO cycle is a powerful natural force, one that has shaped human history and continues to influence life on Earth in profound ways. With La Nina potentially on the horizon in 2024, it's a reminder that we live on a planet where massive climate systems are in constant motion. As our world warms, these systems are becoming more unpredictable and extreme, challenging us to adapt to a new climate reality. But by understanding how these cycles work and by preparing for the changes they bring, we can reduce the damage they cause and ensure a more resilient future. The more we learn about ENSO, the better equipped we will be to navigate the challenges ahead.